papers cover three papers one is rh124 and rh134 and the last one is rh rh254 okay uh, it covers uh, the sorry most of the profile is to cover for a linux administrator and devops admin and also some of uh, uh, dbas and uh, developers also are having the classes since it covers both basic systems and admin part okay uh do you want me to explain the each papers now or can we start the regular what is linux or basics yeah we can uh, go and uh, talk about linux linux right okay uh yeah so i don't have the my personalized uh, linux uh, ppt so i just got it up from net so start with this one okay Uh, before starting the classes, let me explain about the roles and responsibilities of Linux admin. So, I mean, uh, what they're going to do as the task in companies. Okay. Uh, actually, Linux administrator have been uh, divided into two major categories. One is a uh, is a legacy Linux administrator. Okay. Okay. Their roles are managing systems that includes os installation and uh, hardware maintenance this network devices etc then user management user management then device management i mean uh, disk management disk management that including adding a disk uh, for example, if a disk uh, is about to reach its threshold, then they have to add a new disk and extend the partition sizes and de deleting the sizes. Okay. Then, software installation. And the installation and also configuration. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is for the companies. This is for the admin who used to work for service. This okay. The, this won't. Uh, this type of admin won't much interfere in the application. Their main job is to installing OS, order maintenance, user manager, disk manager. This will be repeated. They used to do this task for n number of clients. Okay. They won't interfere with the application part. If anything goes wrong in application, they are the these people won't be responsible for that. And uh, this only for service-based companies. Their task will be routine task. They will keep on doing this task with the n number of times. Okay. These are uh, typical Linux administrator. Their growth is like a Linux admin and a senior Linux administrator and the IT mentor a kind of thing. Okay. This is typical. And another one is. DevOps admin. Okay. Uh, I'm just. Are you able to hear my voice clearly? Yeah, I can. You can write. Okay. The DevOps admin is a newly created job role, which is a very fav. Uh, I mean, what I can say. It's just created a five to six years before, uh, and it's very famous in uh, U.S. and uh, European countries. It's for uh, it's for more, mostly for the companies who is having the admin as a uh, sorry who is having a product, the admin who support for their product, not as a service. The uh, admin is working for the company products. Their role is like uh, they mostly work on AWS clouds, mostly work on clouds. 
like AW, Azure AWS Cloud and uh, Azure and uh, Azure AWS OpenStack Eucalyptus Okay. And then there is managing application. Starling, Apache, Nginx, Tomcat, Archie, AliveD, and uh, hello? Yeah. Uh, keep AliveD and uh, what can I say yeah. uh, HA proxy these are the applications mostly on web based applications their main role is to install and also they need they are able to configure their application their application inside that application their, uh, sorry their code into their applications then uh, managing users users Disk management okay. and uh, automation part. Like Chef, Chef Puppet. I think you might have heard these things, right? Chef Puppet. Automation of their process infrastructure. For example, uh, they need to have some. They need. They need to make some changes in uh, Apache, and these changes has to be reflected in. 10,000 machines at, at a second. Then it's very hard for the person to enter into the, all the machines and make the changes and restarting the service. Instead of that, they can make a code and the code has been displayed in Chef and the using Chef, the changes can be propagated to all the machines at a time, at a second. Okay, those will be uh, those will be uh, this will be managed by using Puppet Chef, Ansible. Actually, this is one of the main. Hello. Yeah. 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 Actually, this is one of the main role in uh, uh, in DevOps admin. Okay. And uh, user management, disk management, and performance tuning. Okay. Uh, okay. I think these are the main categories. I don't want to have more depth. Or more depth of knowledge. Okay. I don't know. Okay. These are the main roles of DevOps Padme. Okay. Here our course will cover voice installation and hardware. What are the hardware? How to add a new disk and manage user administration and software installations. Okay. And uh, and performance. We can see some performance of systems. Okay. And uh, these are. Uh, Exceptional courses like Apache are the different from uh, it, it won't be not, it will not be covered in a uh, Tomcat. Sorry, it won't be covered in a uh, Red Hat. But we can see if you want, I can teach these things and also Chef and Puppet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So first we can see the first paper one to four. Uh, are you clear about these rules, or do you want to have any doubts in it? Yeah, there is uh, no doubt as of now, but your battery is not. Yeah, yeah. One minute. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm I'm able to hear some voices in your background. No yeah, some some noises of some noises of fan, I guess. Okay, so no issues. I can start a class. Okay. Uh, so the first paper is one to four. Okay. okay. This paper will cover cover basic command line, managing physical devices and software installation, network connections and monitoring managing resources and managing security files and user administration, Linux file system virtualization journalings. Okay. Uh, for OS installations, uh, let me tell my tell about my environment that I'm having in my machine. Uh, hello. 
Ya, oke. Oke. This is my environment. What I'm having is uh, virtual box. I'm installed. I have installed a virtual box, and top of virtual box, I, I have created a vagrant. Vagrant is a software that used to manage that virtual box. Okay. Uh, vagrant. Vagrant. Okay. Okay. Let me. Let me. One minute. If you want to in have the same setup in your in your local, just install virtual box vagrant and and git git. Okay, and uh, you can install virtual. Sorry. You can install virtual box and vagrant, but before installing git, just let me know. I I, need, I have some settings that I need to incorporate in before making changes, so that you can use the same environment. Okay, and uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Let me start with uh, what is Linux, how it is. Okay, okay. Uh, this is okay. Whole courses. I just got it from net. I even I can forward this content, and also I have the books for sorry. Books for the RxC in my local machine. If you want, I can transfer those files to you, so that you can have it in your. You can check. Uh, Let's courses. Let's start this one. Okay. Uh, what is Linux? Actually, this is. Okay, this is the history of Linux. The first OS that was started is as Multi X. Okay, it's a uh, proprietary. It means the code is uh, uh, owned by a particular person. Uh, no one can mod alter the code, and no one can have their their changes in their OS. It is 1965. Later, uh, they have started as Unix. It's developed in AT&T in 1969. That also used for server ma server management. And the code was also a proprietary, so no one can make the changes, anything in the code. And if you want to have encrypt any changes, if you want to incorporate any changes in the application, that has to be approved by Unix. That has to be approved by the person who owned OS. Uh, in the meanwhile, in 1991, a Linux went to Torvald. Is a student in Helsinki University, He's a second year student, have I created a, a OS called Linux. It's a free BSD. Sorry, it's own. It's uh, supported by free BSD net BSD. It means that the code is open. He just created the OS kernel and he just published a uh, mail to everyone saying that the code is open and those who want to incorporate their changes in their operating system can able to do. So after some time, he received a, a mail from. This is actually a mail. The page that you are seeing is uh, actually a mail. You can see that one. Uh, after some period, the, uh, the the people who made the changes uh, reverted back the changes to uh, Linux, and he made as a complete application uh, operating system, and he delivered to uh, GNU, GNU licensed. It means that anyone can make changes in their application. After some time, the and the sorry, the Linux code were adopted by various companies. And then uh, and created an uh, operating system based on their, their need. For example, Red Hat. You can see uh, Linux. Yeah, this is a major many distribution. You can see uh, there are more than 300 distribution in Linux. Linux is an operating system that can be distributed that that has been distributed by more than 300 companies. Red Hat is the one of the major companies that have created that have created a Linux that will be support only for server server part. Likewise, Red Hat, SUSE Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu. Those are the major distribution. You can also see that Ubuntu will be used in laptop. It means that they have created a, they have created a Linux.
uh, that can't be used in uh, server part. So likewise, Linux has been used in many many hardwares. Like uh, starting from operating system, it also used for many embedded systems. It means that based on the hardware, you can customize the Linux code. Okay. These are the major distributors. Okay. So advantages of Linux. First one is 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 free. It means that you can see uh, Red Hat. Even though it was being owned by Red Hat, you can still use uh, Red Hat as a free. But you can't get support from them until you get paid uh, until you pay for the support. So it, you can say it's in a free operating system. The code will be free. You can use it in your laptop as a free version. But if you want to have, if you have any problem in your laptop, if you want to get some support, then you have to get paid for them. Okay. Then the first one is purchase cost is low. Next one is open source software. It means that the source is open. Even the code, the kernel and the shell everything is open open in the sense you can get the code of each application of linux in internet and you can modify the code based on their need so it means that its code is open source the code is open source and the multi user mode scalability and vendor support these are the one of the advantages multi user mode is for example in windows in it, you can have only one login at a time. Even if you go to Windows Server, you can at, you can make at least uh, you can make at the max four to eight support. If you want to make a multi login, then you have to pay for each login. You know that, right? So, but in Linux, it it's it's not a concern. You can have you can get n number of connections at same time. Perhaps uh, your machine has to support. Your machine have uh, should have the capability of supporting multi-user. I mean, it need it should have the proper uh, hardware capabilities for supporting more than thousand users. Else, the system will go down since uh, running out of resources. Okay, and scalability. Scalability in the sense uh, you can scalable scale the resources in even without uh, restarting the machine. For example, if you are using a machine, you are running uh, you are running application in a one partition. For example, the partition getting filled at a time. At the moment, you can request for a LAN or sorry SAN team to add a space to that partition, and without rebooting the application, we sorry without rebooting the server, you can extend the the cr crunching space. So that is the, those are common uh, common as scalability and security. You, you know that. A Linux will have an inbuilt firewall, uh, IP tables, and a file level firewall, uh, SE Linux. Okay, like this, they have many, many. So, those are the advantages. Those you will get those things without paying anything. Okay, okay, and uh, so, sorry. The disadvantage of Linux deep learning curve, uh, learning, sorry, I mean, uh, understanding the and having a your creating application would take time since it has many things if you do any mistakes in Linux it is irreversible the mistake is mistake for example if you are deleting a file it will delete a fi the file get deleted perhaps you can't recover anything even it won't prompt for anything like are you are deleting some files do you want to delete or not you it won't prompt anything at the moment you give the command it will get deleted and it can't be revert back at the command that you gave next the hardware support no, no, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. In even in, in Linux, you have a supporting software, but you need to install the software before recovering it. With the software has to be installed as soon as you install the OS. Yeah. Okay. If you if you delete a file, but you are trying to recover using that software, it won't. But in Windows, you can do that. Like yeah. Likewise, the changes whatever do whatever things you do in Linux, it won't prompt for any warning or anything, any warning, any blocking messages, anything. So if you do anything, that you are the responsible for that changes. Okay. And hardware support. Hardware support is uh, that is one of the concern. 
for example if you are using linux in your laptop if you want to add any external devices in your machine then you need to get a hardware for uh, uh, usually you will get a hardware support i mean the drivers for that devices for windows yeah. but linux but for in linux it won't be then one thing is you need to get uh, the hardware for you need to get uh, touch with that support team for getting that uh, code driver code uh, most of the software won't they won't create uh, drivers for linux since uh, the windows sorry since the desktop support is very less for linux they only concern on uh, windows Server. that is one of the issue so uh, that's one of the concern in uh, linux and another one is end user applications application support will be very less uh, like uh, in same as hardware the application support application pro support is very less in uh, linux okay these are the things which we discuss uh, sorry these are the comparisons with nt and linux so scalability and everything is there only the license cost is less and the network performance is very less in la uh, sorry uh, network performance will be good in linux it means that uh, you can tune the linux as per your need for example if you are going to use a linux operating system only for uh, ftp then you can remove the rest of the services that, run, that are running in linux so the network will be only allocated for ftp so no other resources can share the network so the performance will be obviously be very fast in linux when compared to windows and one more thing is in windows the 30% of the resources will be consumed for graphics but linux since we won't use the graphic section in a servers the performance would be low, uh, good and security will be obviously very good because it has the uh, many firewalls and uh, clinux for file level things Okay. 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 Next. Okay. Uh, this is a hierarchical in hierarchical file system in uh, Linux. Okay. Um, in Windows, you can see C drive, D drive, E drive, right? Likewise, yeah. in in Linux, yeah, it has the uh, partitions. These are the folders. Okay. Uh, I'll 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 explain about the partition later because I'm just going to. Uh, explain that uh, folder what are the folder that you are going majorly you use in linux then later we will cover up the partitions partitions are like a drive drive for example you are going to allocate a particular file particular size for particular partitions okay like as we have in linux before that i just explain about the uh, configuration i mean uh, folders that majorly use in linux as soon as you install a linux system you will see these folders in the machines uh i can practically i can see show you that one mm. you can see that right yeah uh, i just switch on the fan now if you if you are hearing any noise just let me know so that i can reduce the fan speed are you able to hear my voice clearly yeah. Sure, right. Okay. So these are the uh, folder folders uh, in the uh, Linux system. As soon as you install uh, Linux operating system, you will see this thing. Okay. Everything will be mounted. Uh, CentOS is it? Yeah, CentOS seven. You can see that one. Right. Cat slash etc slash red dot Linux. This is seven point CentOS seven point one. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually i already installed it if you want i can install i can show it up that one but installation is not a big deal in linux because it got uh, they have uh, even reduced in many uh, manual intervention in uh, os installation so it will be very easy for installing in linux and moreover uh, most of the company have transformed into cloud installing part has been taken out by cloud itself the no one is now, no one is now installing uh, i mean manually installing os in uh, hardware devices everything will be incorporated in a cloud itself so just need to you need to create a la images and launch image okay and based so on your need of, uh, red hat linux is tougher or with the easier one it's very easy now the centos 7 has very easy you you might have to give only i think you know, 10 to 5 parameters during installation 
we, we we are going to cover it up but since uh, you said the demo class right if i start installation you yeah, take at least third no, 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 uh, it is not today actually yeah 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 that's right okay uh, okay see uh, as soon as you install a os you will have this directory structure okay everything will be under slash every partition will be under slash uh, each folder has its own meaning okay let me i will explain each partition sorry each folder now okay uh, first first one is bin you can see that one okay bin what is ls list is it yeah ls is list i can cover the command later if you want uh, yeah ls is listing the folders folders inside a the listing a content inside a folder okay i am now i am listing a folder is inside slash that's why you're getting this one i'm already in slash that's why you're displaying the folders inside the slash so okay these are the folder bin boot dev etc home lib lib 64 linux is one i have created and media mnd opt proc rep repo is my is one i have created root run has been uh, this T, uh, temp usr var some of the directory which which i have created i am i'm going to exclude those things because uh, that is the one i have created so it won't be there if i install a os okay so first one is bin first one is bin what is bin so what are the command that us user will be using will be residing inside a bin folder okay? the command for example ls command showing right sorry the basic command host name user using normal user using command will be inside a bin okay inside bin folder for example python or host name host entry gun see for unbinning the folder these commands will be reside inside a bin folder and next one is dev explain what is dev dev is a device folder see as i said earlier linux will have all the drivers for devices by default but it won't have for new devices but the only device for for example the floppy drives or a disk uh, dvd drives or pen drive for understanding those hardware it will have the, by default it will have the device drivers so as soon as you insert it it will find a, as soon as you reboot a machine it will, will it will first check the list of device devices which are attached to inside the machine uh, for example if it is find if you find a, a dvd drive inside a machine it will create a device driver inside the this folder dev folder for example i have mounted i have uh, inserted a dvd drive inside the virtual machine you can see that one mm, ls uh, yeah. actually this is the one responsible for disk dvd drive i can show it up for us if you want to see the content then you have to mount the device it has it now it's got mounted since it's a dvd drive it's write protected read only mode so you can't uh, edit uh, drive right that's why it's in read only mode uh, dvd uh, read only mode so if i go inside a mnt I, I, what i'm what i did now is i just mounted the devices inside a directory if you want to read any devices i mean dvd drive disk or pen drive or external hard disk you need to mount inside any drive any folder then only you can see the content of that devices see i have mounted a dvd drive in, under mnt now i can see that files inside the disk for example it is a sendos 7 it is a content of the os it's just a content of the os okay okay so those drivers will be inside dev as soon as you find a dev drive devices attached with the machine it will create a device driver inside this folder uh, okay so if you have inserted a device if you if you find it's not got detected you can check whether the device drivers have created inside this folder if it doesn't then either there is a problem in the devices or you might not have the device drivers for that devices you need to install that driver, driver okay then then home 
okay home is a directory for users The home directory for the users will be created inside the background. Inside the home, for example, I'm going to create a user like Sam123. I've created a user now. Then see the home directory will be created. Before that, it was there, it was not there. After creating it, I've created a folder. It means that the home directory for the user will be residing inside the home. And another one is lib64. What is lib64? Lib64 is a folder which will hold the libraries for the software. The whatever the binaries that you are executing, whatever the software that you are executing in the Linux, it might have some libraries. If it is a 64-bit software, the libraries for that software will be end up in lib64. 64. Lib64. 64. Most of it will be as a dynamic library. I will explain what is a dynamic library or static library later. So those library will be inside this folder, lib64. Got it? And uh, Next one is media. What is media? Uh, by default, some software, some devices, for example, pen drive, it will have the auto run file, right? So what it will be do? What it will do, right? As soon as the device inserted inside a hardware machine, it will execute the auto run file get executed, and the device will be mounted on some partition name. Some, for example, uh, in Windows, you can see as a removal disk E, a removal disk F. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise, in Windows, in Linux, it will get mounted under media. This is a folder which it will have the auto-mounted auto devices. Auto-mounted devices will be mounted under the media. For example, if you insert a mount for pen drive, by default, it will get mounted and, it, the, device, and the content of the pen drive will be seen under media. If it doesn't, then you have to manually mount the command which I gave you earlier, right? Mount iPhone dev slash ssr0 slash media. Like even if it doesn't mount automatically, then you have to execute those commands. Okay. So this is the folder responsible for automatic mount. Then another one is apt. Apt is an optional folder. Opt optional folder is for uh, optional having an optional software. Some software, for example, uh, some third third party for for VLC or any third party software. If you install in Linux. The source code will be available in optional in apt. The main software, for example, if you are installing Apache or Nginx, those are the main software that will be run by using root, right? Administrator, administration. Uh, the those software will be administrated by admin. Those software will be reside under slash etc. Okay. Some exceptional software that will be optional one that 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 need not be governed by admin or any kernel then those software will be installed under opt it's very optional optional folder okay for example if you are you installing some managing monitoring software in Linux, those software will be resigned under opt very right then another one is another one is repo repo is the one folder that i have created in machine that that won't be available if you install OS. then then next one is run Okay, run is for making a lock. Lock, lock is a famous one. Lock is like a file. Uh, it's like a uh, is a acknowledgement of starting an application. You can select that. If you start an application, then the application will create in a file inside a run. It means that the start file application have been started. If the same application have started by some other user, it will first check the this folder run folder whether they have created any pid or any log for the software if it has created then it will prompt like the software has already been started if you want to start again then kill the previously started software okay. got it yeah. the run will be available in two locations for example i'm started yum it's a software i'm installing i'm creating i'm trying to install uh, yes try to start a uh, application
now i, st I started a service i started a software and in the middle i stopped it i stopped in the sin i suspended those process process in suspended state mm -hmm. you can see there is a log created you can see that one where run m.pid inside a run actually run folder will be available two location one in var and another one run run some software will be using a var run location some software will be using a slash run location a pid will be created it says that the so software is already created if, we, if i want to start it again then i have to remove it then i start then it will start again so this is uh, for that purpose they are using this one. okay run is run for this one and srb for service folder the service which are running in the linux machine right those logs will be available in srb as of now i am not using anything so it will be very empty and uh, another one will be temp tmp folder tmp folder is for storing a temporary files for example if you are running a software in a mission the machine will create some log file for analyzing so those log file will be available in temp uh sometime if the temp if the temp got filled the application will be very slow sometimes the system even got reboot restart again since the temp file got filled so you have to properly monitor the temp folder else you may have to assign more space for temp so this is the main folder then another one is vagrant is the one i have created because i have installed a linux inside vagrant the folder have been created and uh, next one is boot boot the booting images will be available in the boot for example you know how the machine is started once uh, uh, for example i can show it up um, this is the booting order when the machine gets start booted the first one is bios yes power on self power on self test will be running then one is mbr is a master boot record it will hold starting starting boot partition location it means that the partition which has which hold the booting files it will it will uh, it will have those information in mbr the next one is crab is the main one it will have the booting files for example uh, you know that uh, you, might, you might have seen like uh, for a minimum ram usage minimum ram uh, record for an application why that so right for example during boot the ram will hold the os images as a temporary so that it will first in start the initial services needed for an application initial service needed for an uh, operating system once it got loaded with the initial service then it will start load the other after applications okay so those images the initial images that are needed for starting the linux will be available in the boot so if the file get corrupted then the system got problem the system won't get boots so this is important files in the inside that there is a two important files one is vm linux you might share this one very rare because very important file there is very important file try troubleshooting for if the system doesn't boot and another one is initial ram file system these are two important file the vm linux will will have the kernel images the i can explain about the kernel later kernel is the mother of operating system so that kernel will be available in the linux system linux image and another one is initial ram file system this will hold the uh, initial services that are for linux those files will be available in initial rams okay then uh, these are in, uh, inside i can even say about crab and dash okay, but this is a crab this is a file which will have the information about operating systems so actually you can see this is a this is a file after mbr after mbr it will pass on to crab in crab the file will be loaded the uh, crab dot cog file will be loaded uh, have you ever installed windows on linux in same machine Have you tried ever? No, I installed Windows more than several times, but uh, I never tried Linux. 
Okay, okay. If you would have if you would have installed a Linux on Windows, you might have seen a screen which will show that what what version of sorry what uh, appliances you're going to choose, whether Linux or Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So this is the file that are responsible for creating that. You know, you can see the timeout option, right? This is the timeout option that will be that will be make you to wait for choosing the operating system. And uh, this is the the rest of the content will be important. I'll be explain later. Those content will show what are the file will be loaded as initial. I was as I said earlier. The image will be loaded, right? I said some images will be loaded during a partition. So those images will be mentioned. Will be mentioned here. That is a VLAN, VM Linux, and we need RAM file systems. So this file is very important. If the system doesn't boot, and if it is stuck in the middle, then you can troubleshoot using this this folder. If if nothing is created in this folder, then that will also be reason for system not booting up. So those informations will be needed in boot. And another one is etc. It's very important file in Linux that for uh, configuring Linux, all the configuration files will be available in uh, available in etc. Right from you are creating a network, changing the IP address, or you have created a username, passwords, and if you are have installed an application, so all the things, will, all the configuration will be inside etc. So this is one of the important. <coughs> location in Linux, important uh, partition in Linux. For example, I created user right Sam123. Those information will be stored in password. See, those information will be stored in password. This password file is inside EC. So this is an important file folder which will have the information about the systems, all this information about the system. Okay. Then after that, lib library folder. Library folder is for, uh, as I said earlier, lib64 is lib64 for the is a library for the application and the application which has the which are installed as a 64 bit, a 64 bit application. Kind of in Windows like program files 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, right. You are right. Likewise, we have two folders. One is for lib64, one is for lib. Lib is for 32-bit 30 to, 30 to applications. And another one is Linux. Linux is the one which I have created, the empty folder. Then another one is MNT. MNT is, it, is a temporary folder. You can use it for mounting some devices. For example, if you have mounted, you have inserted a pen drive, it will get mounted in a media. As I said earlier, right? If it is an automatic mount, it will get mounted in a media. And if you have inserted a device, disk drive device, then the folder, uh, since the folder is already been occupied, you can use the MNT as an optional one for mounting your devices. Uh, for example, I'm on image, I can show you that. I am stuff now. I have mounted my disk, DVD disk in the MNT. Yeah, it's an optional one, MNT. Uh, okay. Uh, one minute, just one minute. One minute. One. This one is uh, MND folders for a temporary mode. Next one is PROC. Okay. Sorry. This is one, one, one more important file for monitoring Linux system. Okay. This file is system, this file system is called uh, this folder is used to is called as a pseudo file system. The files inside this folder will get updated each second. This will have the information about the application which are running in our machine. For example, as soon as the machine gets loaded, it will first check the, which are the hardware devices which are running in our machine, right? Those information will be asked. After gathering all the information, it will get updated in this folder. Insert CPU info. For example, now I opened a CPU info file which has the information about the processor. I'm using a 2.76 gigahertz Intel Core processor. It's an high right? and uh, the speed and the, the flag that are supported for that TPU and the 64 bit. So though all the information will be stored inside this folder. But this folder, these files are not a permanent one. It will get updated each, uh, whenever the system gets rebooted. And whenever application started, a new folder will be started inside an 
prop. For example, you know that in Windows, when you start an application, your, your process ID will be allocated for that application. You know, right? Yeah. Likewise in Linux, Likewise, in Linux, also uh, process ID will be created for application. For example, I have started an application VS FTP. It's an FTP application. I will, as soon as I have started, the process has been created. It's a process command. It's like a process list command that you are using Windows. It's for uh, seeing the application. For example, the process has been created, and it has been assigned with this and CPU information or anything. The first column is to say like process ID for this application. See, after create start, process of started, the pro, uh, a folder will be created with the PID number. Sorry. Inside the folder. Before that, it was not there. After starting the application, even I can say it, show it again. Okay, I have filled the process now. Uh, if I grab process, no process will be available. This is the process. This is the command. Which I, this, is a, the, uh, this process I've created since I used to grab. So I can exclude that one. So, grab. so if you see, no FTP process has been created. Now I'm going to start it up. Yes, FTP. I'm going to start a process. Now I started. If I grab, a process will be created. Likewise, a folder will be created with that process ID. You can see that one. See, a folder will be created inside the prop. Yeah. Yeah. Inside, okay, inside that folder, information about the process will be there. Four, seven, seven, two, five. The information about the process will be there inside. For example, uh, many things, process ID, mount, what are the mount points that are this process is using? And mainly command is something with a command line. This process has been created using the command FTP. So you can see that right? Yes, FTP. So those information will be there. Uh, this is the if you want, if you have some people if the people used to say if application is getting slow, then you have to grab that process and you have to go inside the process ID. After getting the process ID, you can check the file system. You can check check. You can check these parameters, whether uh, how many percentage of CPU that it has consumed for this process. You can see this thing. Anything is here. Session ID. System session ID is four, and system call that out using for this thing. And many informations will be available in this block folder. For a particular process. Uh, apart. From so these are the process IDs. These are the process ID that are running in our machine. This got created. This is a, the, the, the folder which are in which are in the number notation side. Right? Those are the process ID. Apart from that, you can see many many files. Those are the files that are created for for machine machine information. For example, partition. There are partition in our machine. So the, the, those are the other information will be available in the prop. If you want to troubleshoot some, if you use some commands, right? Some monitoring commands. The commands will be gathering the information from this prop file. Either you can use the command or you can directly go to this folder. I can see the information. So I am in for memory information. Everything will be there. This is for uh, troubleshooting your applications and uh, you want to maximize the resource. For example, if you are running out of some uh, resources in your machine, you added the RAM, but still the application is not consuming that RAM. Then you can troubleshoot here. You can make the application to utilize more resources. So those things will be troubleshooted inside the prop. Okay. Then uh, after the prop, then a root file system. Root is a folder that are created for root. Sorry, root is for admin folder. Uh, by default, in Windows, you can you, you can see the administrator, right? The administrator is the one who yes. used to govern all the things. Likewise, in Linux, root is the person who is responsible for all managing stuff. So, using the root only, you can modify anything in your machine, like administrator. So, those root files, for example, you are logging as a root and you are going to keep some files, those files will be 
reside inside the root. I have, as a, I'm a root, right? My, my, I'm, I'm logging as a root. You can see ID if I show, it's a root. My home directory is root. I, I'm the, okay. Got it. Next one is SB. The next one is SB. SB has been is like bin. Bin is the one which has the binaries, I mean the software for the user. SBIN is the folder which has the admin privileged commands. For example, I said right user add command. This command will be stored in either in user SB or user S SB. SB is the folder. Usually we have the notation as SB, which will have the admin using commands, admin commands. Okay, only the root can use these commands, not all the users. Okay. Next one is sys. Sys. Uh, <clears throat> Sys is a folder which will have the information about the kernel. Kernel is the mother of operating system. I can explain about after these uh, directories, I can explore, explain about that uh, kernel information. What is kernel? How it's got work? Okay. Kernel is the mother of uh, operating system. So it's, it is for, for example, if you're creating a process, if you're starting an application, first the request will be forwarded to the kernel. What the kernel will check the available resource in our machine. If based on the resources, it will create a process with a resource size. For example, if the process needed a 2 GB of RAM and 40 MB of hard disk, then it will be requested to the kernel and the kernel will, will check whether the, uh, the requested resources are available in the current situation. If it is, then the resource will be added to that. The resources request will be afforded to that application and application got uh, start. Okay. Those information will be available inside this folder. Either you can directly edit the information inside this. For example, dev. Okay, block. Is, dev is for devices. Okay, block. So these are the files. Okay. Each will have some information about this file, but you can't directly edit this file because. Uh, Editing this file will directly affect the kernel, the, I mean the whole mission. So before that, it should get consulted to the application team before editing this file. Either you can directly edit the file, else you can use this is a command, this is a kernel parameter. This kernel parameter should be based on the request. For example, if I want to tune the memory. These are the memory information. For example, this is the memory information. So, for example, if you're, if you're using over overcommit memory, for example, if I want to flush the memory for after something, I mean, if I am using a, a machine for more than one year, some of the catches will be stored in an application, right? Those catches has to be yeah. cleaned after some time by machine. Sometimes it won't. So, you have to manually tell the memory how to flush the catches after some period of time, but it should get consulted to the application. For example, some application might have to, might have to hold that uh, uh, process information in the memory for some time. If you get, if it get flashed after five minutes, then the process the application get crashed. So before touching, before changing anything in this area, it should get consulted with the application team. Okay. So those information will be stored in sys folder. Either you can directly go to this folder and you can edit, else you can edit using the sysctl command. Okay, uh, those are the things. Then, uh, okay. Then, TFTP boot is the one which I've created, so you can skip it up. Then, another one is user. Actually, this, uh, actually, this is the main feature in difference between CentOS 7 and 6. Earlier, in CentOS 6 and 5, 4 thing, the SBIN folder has been uh, made to available in uh, inside slash, but now they have moved this content inside USR. USR is a folder which will hold applications which are installed by the user. If a user installed an application, the application software starting 
script i mean if i want to, if i install the application the application command will be inside a binary right those command will be created using created inside user now even if a root inside a software that also going to be reside inside dash user sb so whatever software you install the uh, related configuration related libraries related binaries will, will be stored inside user you can see the bin lib64 lib has been everything is are inside user actually it's a new architecture change new architecture changes that has made in centos 7 okay so how about in the company they are using centos 7 or they are using uh, See what is the difference between CentOS 7 and Red Hat, right? Uh, CentOS 7 is a trial version of Red Hat. Actually, uh, CentOS 7 is owned by Red Hat. Before they are introducing any concept or any changes in Red Hat, they first introduce in CentOS. Then, uh, since it is uh, free, right? Many people use they will use that CentOS 7, and if they find any bug fixes, then will be revert, reverted back to the CentOS, sorry, Red Hat company. Once they show that uh, uh, operating system is stable, then will be then it will be uh, published as a Red Hat since it's a proprietary, right? It's a payable. So that is the difference between CentOS and and make both are same. CentOS and Red Hat six are both are same. Same. Even you, you can't find anything, but the bugs will be some bugs will not be fixed in CentOS, but those bugs will be fixed in uh, Red Hat, and you won't get any support for CentOS. You'll get support only for Red Hat. Okay. okay. Okay, and uh, the last folder is where. Where is the folder which will have the log files, and also run folder. Run. I said right, and the log will be there in run. Th those will also be there in uh, where folder. Log as logs. For example, system log, where log messages. This is the system log. When it got started, who is the who is the person who started the session? So those information will be inside the log. So all the logs will be stored inside that that log and spool. This is for mail. Mail information will be there in spool. So the 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 file which are related for mail, the file related for log, mostly the result, the output results of any operation will be stored inside the var. It's a log locations. Usually for uh, in companies, the log folders will be mounted in separate partition because most of the application logs will be reside inside a var. So if if it got filled, then the application gets slow down or it might got trash after some time. So so as a pre measure, they used to have the var as a separate partitions. I will explain the partition later. So these are the I can, these are the main uh, folder on the structure in Linux. Okay. 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 Then that that uh, uh, can I explain about the uh, uh, as of now we have covered the basic of what is Linux and the basic structure of Linux. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we have after uh, can we have have ten more than more ten minutes more? I just can explain about the operating system. What is operating system? How it got works. Or uh, we can wind up. Sure, sure. You can explain it. Don't be wrong. No problem, right? Until okay. uh, until you have a class something, uh, we can see it for ten more minutes. It won't be there. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, the class uh, class got started. The person is waiting. There are no issues, but I have already said uh, that I'm having. Okay. See.
Uh, this is a general architecture of uh, Linux, general uh, architecture of uh, operating system itself. Uh, why do we need operating system? Operating system is needed for uh, understanding the hardware, utilizing the hardware in an effective way. Okay. Uh, earlier, before uh, user UI, for UI game, user experience of game, user interface of game, uh, we used to communicate with the hardware with the binaries, binary and uh, so those are being named as in a low level languages since it's become very harder for everyone to understand the low level languages they need a high level language which used to convert their user command to a low level language and uh, communicate with the hardware and hardware will revert back to the low low level language and the low low level language has to be converted to high level language and user get the output this is the concept so in linux how it works right this is general ar architecture. Once you install an operating system, a kernel will be installed. Kernel is the one which used to convert the low-level language into high-level language. Okay. And the shell. Shell is the carrier of the command. The user, whatever you type in the kernel, right? This is the this is the terminal. This is terminal. By default, Linux will have five shell, five to four shells. Those are bash, bash scripting. You might have heard of bash script. Uh, shell, mm, K shell, C shell, the many shell. Shell is the carrier. Shell is the carrier. By default, I'm having bash, bin slash bash is my carrier. It means that the whatever command that I'm typing is a bash command. The bash command will the bash command will carry the command and it will forward the request to the kernel. The kernel will convert the ls. What is ls? Uh, obviously a script. Ls is a, maybe a C or port. That port will be converted into binary, binary, binary. Then that will be communicated to the hardware. For example, ls is a command used to list the content inside a folder. Okay. So first, it will get the information about the, the ls command and the location where I'm executing the command. Those information will be forwarded to the kernel, and the kernel will execute, uh, will convert the script into binary and execute that part inside in the location where he want to have that information. For example, I, I mean, I'm executing inside SDA in that uh, a particular disk. So that will be communicated to the hardware. After execution, the output will be revert back to the kernel as a binary. Then the kernel will convert that results into output as based on the output. For example, in the printer or output screen, that will be transformed to shell, and then shell will display the results to the user. It's a general architecture. Mm -hmm. um, the shell is based on our needed earlier. Earlier, the I mean the at, at the starting of the Linux, they have used the shell, basic shell that won't have the history. For example, the water command history and backspaces, it won't be there. For example, this is a shell. Still, it will be available, but nothing will be there. History, nothing will be there. Nothing. For example, now they have incorporated this one. But features like bash won't be available in shell. So they have created in a shell called bash. Bash is an born again shell. It has the advantage of like using regular expressions, regular expressions, and uh, it will have many 
regular expressions and you will have many uh, features like uh, uh, communicating uh, executing the command in a one line uh, instead of creating a script to run uh, uh, instead, instead of creating a file and have to writing a script you can directly have the command in direct one liner itself there are many advantages in bash likewise if some people who used to who, who want to use a c shell then they can change the shell as a c shell and they can directly communicate it with a card so this is a general architecture mm. okay. i think uh, so is it have done and uh, in later classes we can cover it up the rest of the things if you have any you have any doubts you can tell me now i can say if you want any particular thing for example this is a general uh, syllabus that i have given by red hat uh, if you want any other specifically if you want any other thing that you need to know about the linux apart from the courses even you can tell me i can uh, take it up those classes also because i can take it up scripting and perl scripts and i can also take it up chef puppet puppet again uh, chef and systems networks so that, those can also be sure. modulated in, uh, in what, what i'm trying to say is we can e we can even change the syllabus if the syllabus as per our need instead of uh, covering up the things which are not related to our uh, part of work for example the, the courses might uh, have many things that are related with a uh, uh graphics section but in uh, but, but in real time no one will use the graphics section even we, we even we can skip it up that section when we can cover it up the section that you are needed apart from these courses so those can can also sure, be sure sure yeah right okay sure, i'll tell you okay and uh, okay you can contact the persons and uh, you can uh, if you want the further classes you just uh, help with the sorry you can confirm the timings so that i can allocate the timings uh, uh sure uh, i'll keep you posted either uh, i'll directly call inform you or I'll ask the people so they to inform you about the timings okay okay okay, sure, okay. And, uh, thanks for the demo yeah no issues no issues no issues thank you thank you